So, what exactly confuses you about the transgender community? Mm. It's not a lot of background information about them, but we don't know who they are. Like they is, have it, is it psychological? Yeah, we don't know the actual in between of it. Is it like something to do with sexual attraction? Or like physical things? Or mental? Or what? The African continent is notorious for its homophobic stance. More than two-thirds of African countries have laws criminalizing consensual same-sex acts. However, in some states, this law is not enforced. In four countries, it is illegal for only men to engage in same-sex acts, while same-sex acts are legal for everyone in only one-third of the continent's countries. In many states, those who challenge sexual or gender norms are subjected to random arrests, detentions, physical and emotional attacks, and discrimination in employment, education, and access to healthcare. Recognized transgender people are almost always treated the worst of the LGBTI. Transphobia. So let's, let's define homophobia first. Homophobia is when you're afraid of a same gendered person coming up to you and making sexual advances towards you. And so that can now be extrapolated to towards transgender people. Now, all of a sudden, a transgender person um, might approach you and, and have a sexual advance at you. And you'll get un angry and you'll commit murder just because you feel uncomfortable by this person, even just talking to you or being around you or you thinking about this person. Trans people are perceived as a threat um, because people don't understand what trans is. So, for instance, the bathroom bill in America where <clears throat> people like they associated gay people with pedophiles and sex offenders, they're doing that with the trans community now. Well, my father was quite transphobic when I told him. <laughs> um, my family abandoning me, I believe, is quite transphobic. Um, I haven't physically experienced anything at work, although it's something people sometimes talk about. Um, but it's very, it's 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 very wrapped up at work because um, it's such a it's such a dangerous thing to to get involved with homophobia and, and transphobia because it's illegal actually. Um, but yes, it's definitely out there. Um, sometimes when I walk in the street, I can see people look and and, and stare and stuff, and I believe that's also transphobia. My gender identification is uh, female. She, her are my pronouns. Well, I'm transgender. I'm a transgender man. Trans man. I'm actually a male. It's pretty good. Yeah. To be transgender means that you were assigned a different gender than uh, you feel inside at birth. So we, we normally say assigned female at birth or assigned male at birth, um, which indicates that that wasn't our choice. We never had a chance to make that choice. Um, the word transgender means um, across gender, where cisgender means on the same side of the gender. So when you refer to someone as a transgender, you basically are telling, oops, indicating that person is not the same gender as that they that they are born with, or that they are assigned at birth. Rather. Um, it wasn't easy. It was a very difficult road. It's still a very difficult road. Um, there's so many challenges. We as transgender community face a 41% suicide rate. Um, you know, it's a constant thing that, that you have to guard against because the support is so sparse and, and inconsistent. Yeah. Everyone needs support in everything they do. So being trans, it's, it's something that people don't know, don't have knowledge of. So, it kind of gets hard for them to support you, not even knowing what they're supporting you on. Um, it's difficult in that people don't, aren't really aware of what it means on a day-to-day -day basis. They're, they're aware of Caitlyn Jenner, um, but they don't know what it means to have someone who's trans in their life. You know, someone today might say, I'm being supportive, and tomorrow that person might change their mind. Caitlyn Jenner stepping out for the first time in the pages of Vanity Fair and in spectacular fashion for photographer Annie Leibowitz. Bruce always had to tell a lie. 
Caitlin doesn't have any secrets. I don't believe that any single trans person is ever going to be a good enough representation for the trans community. That's why it's called the community. She's, she's a motivation to um, transgenders out there, like people like us. Because you get that inspiration to, you know, want to be out there and also tell your story. I walk up to people and I tell them I'm transgender, and they're like, oh, like Caitlyn Jenner. Okay, cool. At least now I don't have to have all the uncomfortable conversations because she's already had them. So I'm for one, I'm thankful for what she's done, but yes, there are things that she's not addressing and yes, there are things that she says that, that, that could hurt us as a community. She's a rich white Republican woman, um, so she doesn't represent the trans community at all. Most trans people are black, um, poor uh, and um, not privileged at all. Um, and she also has some very uninformed views about trans people um, and she's given a platform to speak about those views and it just misrepresents the trans community. But we've been hurt for thousands of years. What's different now all of a sudden? And you know, we can sit and talk about Caitlyn Jenner for forever and a day and, and say good things and bad things like anybody else. Just like myself, I've got good, good traits and bad traits. But the important thing is that we as a community have to stand together and we have to work together with the greater LBGT community because we are not enough to be representative. We need the bigger LBGT community to, to help us out with all the other problems that, we, that they've already sorted out, that we still have. So there's always this question, should the, the, the transgender community separate from the LBGT community because we don't really have the same goals, but yet we do because we're still a minority and we need all the help that we can get. You know, first you've got to understand what it means to transition and 99.9% .9 of the transition is in your mind. Um, some people describe it as um, an alignment between what you see in your head and what you see in the mirror. Um, it's also a metamorphosis into who um, you want to be. So if you say I'm in transition, it's something that you've, that's the only decision really that you can make. You can't decide if you're male or female and if you, if you, um, you know, if you're transgender or not. That's not a decision you can make. You can only make the decision to accept yourself. And that's when the transition starts because now you've accepted yourself and you now decide to be who you are. It's a choice that you as, a, as an individual that you have to make. It's like, how comfortable are you with your own body? And do what you have to do to be happy. Because this is really what, what this is all about. People always come to me and like, um, you can do whatever you want as long as you're happy. And it sounds a little bit like they're being facetious or something but that's really what it is what what is it that you need to do to make yourself happy you know and the transition is is about that people often think transition is about going for a medical procedure and that's one thing you can't just go for a medical procedure because your hand doesn't make you human just as much as your genitals doesn't make you a gender you know so um transition is is up here you transition and you accept yourself. That's what it is. People think that you need to go for an operation, you know? People think that you can start the transition today and in a couple of days or months or weeks or years, you'll be finished, you know? Transition never finishes. It's something that you do every day, all day long, for the rest of your life. And it's, it's a very personal thing, you know? So people often come up to you and they, they start asking inv invasive questions. Your private parts are different now, aren't they? I don't want to talk about it because it's, it's, still, it's really personal. Don't you feel funny with the wrong genitalia? When Not as a joke, you stand up in the women's bathroom. You've got breast implants. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, they're tasteful, whatever, whatever's going on there. Thank you. So if I saw you undressed, okay. you would look like a woman to me totally Yes? What are you doing? Some transgender people feel very offended by these kind of questions. Personally, I don't mind. I love talking about it and, and, and what it takes and everything because I feel people need to be educated. 
Um, but you know, at some point it gets it gets a little bit much at some point, and you sometimes you feel you know I just want to be alone a little bit, and I just want to sit back and just be myself a little bit. But then you can't. But the medical industry doesn't see uh, transgender as, as a medical illness anymore. Um, they actually now refer to gender dysphoria as the as the um, the thing that they treat, or not gender dysphoria, but just dysphoria. So I can be dysphoric with the hair on my arms. I can be dysphoric with my genitals. I can be dysphoric with the fact that I don't have breasts, and that's what they treat now. So the there's no mental application. Although you still have to see a psychologist and a psychiatrist, you have to have letters from both if you want to go to home affairs and change your name. Um, but it's also important for people to realize that, you know, if there is any other mental illness, that that has to be treated first. You can't go and treat being transgender if you are obsessive compulsive or something like that. Or, um, you know, any, any other mental illness has to be sorted out. So the, the big issue with, with transition is, and you get what they call transition regret. You know, people people detransition. There there are trans people who reverse their transitions. Not many, but there are um, enough for people to say, "Oh no, this is this is not true, and this is, shouldn't be happening, and whatever." But the the thing that that people think is that you transition, and then you think your life's going to be different. But your life is always what you make of it. You know, if you put the work in, then you're going to reap the rewards. But if you're going to go headlong into a transition after you've been solely unhappy all your life and you haven't dealt with the issues, your transition is going to be a failure. I want to ask you, Dr. Jen, where the medical community comes down on all of this with Caitlin's coming forward like this and Laverne Cox and Andrea? I mean, I think in many ways, medicine is still in the dark ages with treating transgender patients. Uh, recent studies have shown there's tremendous bias and discrimination and even harassment. And some of that shockingly comes from within the medical community. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. hardly any training. I trained in New York City 10 to 15 years ago, never saw a transgender patient. Most doctors have never treated a transgender patient. Well, you know, objectively, if you look at it, um, the pathology changes. If I'm now on, on estrogen, all of a sudden my body is, is different than a normal cis man's body. So I can understand a doctor standing back and saying, well, actually, I don't know what I'm doing and I would rather refer you to someone else that knows what they're doing. And again, this is my big problem with, with going overseas and having an operation or even going to Steve Biko and having an operation because at some point I'm going to need medical treatment from another doctor and if things have changed so drastically in my body that that doctor just can't, um, is not equipped to, to, to deal with me then I'm going to have a problem. But that is no excuse. The doctors needs to be trained. There should be a, a, a medical chapter that the doctors would have to study um, with trans people. You know, and it's not impossible. There's nothing stopping the medical industry from becoming more sensitive towards trans people and becoming more um, um, facilitating and, and, and helpful towards trans people. There's just no excuse at all. Religion, for one, um, has, has a great impact. Uh, Christianity don't accept us at all. Um, most Christian people shun us. Um, most, most Jewish people uh, shun us. Um, Muslims shun us. Um, the list goes on. Even Buddhists shun us. Uh, we we are not accepted within religious um, constructs. Um, even even um, ill ill descriptions of, of us exist very sparsely within religion. Um, it's like religion kind of like just close the door on us and say, you know what, we're not going to deal with people like you at all. Um, race. I know that the um, the. The, the, the white South, South Africa, uh, white Afrikaner race is, is very anti-gay and by extension anti um, anti transgender. So uh, I mean homophobia is, is is a general thing. I won't really say that specifically race, but I know uh, places like Zimbabwe. I can't go to Zimbabwe. There's no way I can go into that country because they'll they'll put me in jail straight away. Yeah, it's in general much easier as a white person. Um, that's not religious and doesn't come from a religious background to be accepted. 
uh, in general. Um, and then it's much more difficult for black, Indian, very uh, rooted in culture people. Um, and if that's then combined with religion, it's um, very difficult for those people to come out to their families. Um, a lot of them are um, rejected by their families. Um, so you have a lot of homeless um, trans people and a lot of trans people in the sex work industry. I always told myself that, no, you know what, God didn't make a mistake by creating me this way. Because um, nowadays you can get like people transition now, nowadays. So if God didn't want people to transition or to be gay, he wouldn't um, make things to be like resources and those doctors to be available to us for us to change. So I believe that he didn't make a mistake. Yeah, it's just a challenge. I remember being very upset when the church actually came out and they said we will now um, facilitate gay marriages because to me that was, you know, the, the church and the Bible always carries on about black and white, there's no in between, there's no greys and now how can this institution now all of a sudden say okay we'll facilitate um, gay marriages. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not going to win me over when they say one day, you know, what, trans people are also welcome in the church because I'm not welcome now. I wasn't welcome yesterday. Why, why now all of a sudden open your doors tomorrow and, and change your mind about something that's clearly been defined 2,000 years ago that caused a lot of issues in my life because all of a sudden now I, I had this thing that God was not going to accept me. Um, God doesn't like what I'm doing because I was dressing up from a very early age. Um, but it was always a wrong, it was always something that, that was not going to be accepted and I was going to go to hell. And it's a culture thing, you know, you're brought up as a little boy, your father would tell you don't, be, don't mix with gays, you don't want to be with gay people and there's always that oppression. My son came to me when, when he was six years old and he said to me, yeah, I don't want to be gay or I don't want to play with gay boys and I'm like, you know what a gay boy is? And he's like, no. And I was like, so where do you get this gay thing from? How can you judge about something that you don't even know anything about? No, no, my friend said they, they don't want to be with gay people. So I was like, okay, obviously their father indoctrinated them already from that age. I mean, age six, what do you know about being gay or straight or whatever, you know? Acceptance, you know, it, it, it dazes and confuses me how People cannot accept people for who they are. I mean, fine, I'm no longer who you thought I was. But does that mean that you have to not treat me any different? Why can't you just sit down and, and have a conversation with me and, and feel my pain? And it's not like my pain is more or less than anybody else's. We all have the same amount of pain. It just has a diff different description and a different frequency. Um, you know, once there is acceptance and, and there's, there's community rather than, than that pushing away and, and abandonment, the fear will go away. Now I'm no longer afraid of coming out. I'm no longer afraid of speaking to my mother or my father or my sister or my friend or my doctor or my, my, my minister or whoever, my school teacher about how I feel because it's, it's made a huge impact on my life. If I had the, the, um, the outlet much earlier in my life, I would have been a lot further today than I am. It takes an it takes um, uh, obscene amount of time and effort to actually discover that you're trans. And it shouldn't be such a big issue. I mean, you can ask a few questions, but then the biggest issue is fear. Because now people, people can admit and say, yes, maybe I am trans, or maybe I'm not. Um, I don't know. How would I know? But am I ready to accept if I am trans? Because if I'm not ready to accept, I'm not going to accept. It's, it's something that's, that's becoming a bit more mainline now. People are, are learning about it and, and trying to understand what it's all about. But it's still, you know, people, people often ask me, are you gay? And it's got nothing to do with sexual preference. Um, 
you can't decide what sexual orientation you are until you know what gender you are. Um, gender identity is how you feel inside. Some people, especially at school, they don't know. Hence I've said that a lot of people don't know about transgendered people. Or the word trans, you know, transgender or trans, yeah. They don't know a lot about that. So they lack knowledge and every time you tell them that you're trans, they're like, Okay, what is this person saying now? I think people just um, still think the LBGT community is a laughing stock. Um, and yes, they, they are doing things to make themselves laughable. Um, <clears throat> but it still doesn't mean that they are laughing stock. And just because we're under the same banner as, as the rest of the LBGT community doesn't make us laughing stock either. Um, but again, it's something that people want to make a joke of. You know, what's more funny than a man in a dress? You know? So people just, they want to not think about these things. I didn't choose to be like this. I've spent 30 years of my life trying to be different, trying to just be normal. And I can't. There's nothing I can do. My only option, I've got two options. Either I blow my brains out or I start living my life and transition. And that's what I've decided to do. It's not. Um, it's not the trans community, it's not the trans people who have an issue with their bodies or their identity, it's um, the community that has a problem with our identities.